so one of the things you mentioned in your post, you mentioned that that movie style writers set up was, um, you know, really, really good um, just for you and, and, and in general. You mentioned before about the fact that from from the management or from the, the, the person in charge, you got kind of the space and the trust to do what you saw was best. Is there other things that come to mind that made it so so good or so unique in, in the spaces that you've experienced? Mm. I mean, honestly, I think Riders was one of the few organizations where I felt they truly cared about the people that were working there, right? Because in, which is not a surprise, but in most organizations, especially when we live in a landscape, at least in esports, where uh, short-term successes are more worthwhile to pursue because splits are short and just the way like how everything is set up, right? Um, and how much you're gaining, like in terms of like overall value um, from just like winning in the short term or trying to do everything possible. But I felt Vitus was a lot more, in a way, wholesome and a lot more caring about the well-being because like yeah they're like of course that we are here to perform and we want to achieve things but priority number one was always your health and well-being so they actually showed genuine care and i don't think i can say that about a lot of other organizations like i mean they might say they do but it's one thing to say uh, to do it uh, then then actually to do it right it reminds me of that talk you had with uh, with duke like that i listened to which was a very uh, interesting conversation as well, like around, like about like how, in a similar way, players they say that they want to be the best, or like uh, in terms of like a public image, like they are very motivated to become the best. But saying it is one thing, but doing it is a completely different thing because it requires like sacrifice, um, doing the things that you will not like to do, right? Like I think, I think this is, I guess the biggest problem humankind in general has with especially players where you will have to want to pursue uncomfort right like in order to train willpower tenacity and actually be, become the best but in a similar fashion where riders actually did care about you they didn't only say but they actually did so because mm. um when Zyrus fell ill because like this was the problem that we had in, in the entire split where Cyrus was having terrible stomach pain honestly i do not know how he was able to perform or manage it like through training like i don't know like he must have had tremendous tenacity and willpower because he like he was in agony like every single day he was in such an agony yet he was sitting there in the room practicing and committed like no other because like Cyrus especially was like the oldest member of the group and I think he's even older than me and um very important out game leader right like he was like he was like the big brother and he was holding the most important communication role like within that team like during the game he was always asking questions like facilitating making sure everyone was like on the agenda on the same page right but he he was in such tremendous pain and riders went out of their way to try and really figure out what the fuck is wrong with you, right? Like, so they went to many different doctors, like in Spain, like hospitals, private doctors. Um, if I recall correctly, it was also private doctors, but they made scans, like, and they just couldn't find anything at all. And you would say that's a normal thing to do, like when someone's like in agony, and I, of course, like I think organizations will do their best to at least uh, take care of like such a player, but I don't think they would go to the same ex extent they did with Cyrus, for example, like bring him to so many different doctors. Um, but at some point it was like getting so terrible, and this was uh, right before playoffs, or a bit before playoffs, like one or two weeks before the playoffs happened. Um, I was having this 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 gut feeling. It's like, you know, like something is wrong because maybe this is cancer or something. I don't know because it's so weird. Like the they can't find anything. Um, 
and he's in tremendous pain and yet it doesn't make any sense right painkillers don't work either and from previous experiences that i had for example with my father he had colored cancer uh when i was like 12 years old like it, it reminded me of those times right and i was like I think we have to send him home just to like make sure to figure out like what what is up with him. Like I didn't I didn't mention cancer because like I didn't want to like create concerns in that moment because I don't know like uh, I don't know if you've experienced with this, but I know that at least some people that I do know also have like difficulty with like just like naming cancer, like even because they've had that personal experience with uh, someone that had cancer or themselves or. But that you don't really want to say it, right? Because let's say it is nothing, then you made like you had like a uterine for nothing, right? So he went home to Sweden, and what did they, what did they find? He had a very specific, um, unique, uh, like a very rare type of um, cancer in his intense uh, intestines that only occurs like to people that are like fifty years older or something. And it's also genetic. So he is literally one in a billion, I believe, like for like actually getting this. And this is actually, yeah, he was out for the rest of the season, right? Like he went home for treatment. It was, I don't know, like it was like, it was really crazy times. It was so painful. And like, it still makes me sad to this day. I still chat to, to him every now and then. Um, he still is suffering in some way from from that because I, mean, I probably he doesn't it doesn't never goes away. But yeah, that <laughs> took a bit of a very sad turn. But mm. I think this type of care is like what kind of like writers stood stood um, out from all other organizations that I've like worked with, and they were like very open to help. They were very very facilitating anything that at least I personally needed. They would uh either take care of or talk or they were great at communication um they were always making sure to go to me first to discuss agenda uh, or calendar or things that had to happen like things were just like very fluid coordinated everyone like had their place their responsibility and i think that is like in long term like why they are like either finding long term successes or are just like very sustainable in that way where they really, yeah, they just really care about people, I think. Mm. I mean, thank you for, for sharing that story. I think it sounds unlike <laughs> unlike anything I've ever even sort of heard of in esports, really. Um, yeah, it's good It's good to hear the... It, it seems to come back to sort of the commitment to the values, you know? Like you say, a lot of, a lot of teams say they care and they might well genuinely want to care. Um, but so many, in so many situations, that story ends with like, well, we tried to do something. We, we took, took yeah. you to some place and they said, you're fine. So, uh, you know, you, so you're fine. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. It, right. It's also not weird for that to happen because like, I mean, I think it's also partly due to the fact that there's like people just are powerless in those moments. Right. They, uh, that's just very simple. And then, but. A lot of people also shrug it off. It's like, okay, they can't find anything, so you should be perfectly fine. So I don't know what you're whining about. Hmm. Also happens, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Heavy one, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> that, yeah. That, <laughs> kind of, I mean, that, that shook me a bit. I mean, what was, um, and what 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 happened to the rest of in the rest of the season? So he he went home, and then did you find yeah. a replacement or play? So we, I mean, we already had like a six or seven player roster. We actually um, we were we, uh, we were having somewhat of a similar system that I had like in 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 Red Canets, where we had Finn as our substitute uh, for top lane, and he was I mean I think back then he was like sixteen years old, you know, like he was like very young or maybe a bit older, like maybe eighteen, something like this. But uh, we were already developing him, uh, of course, like within the team, he would play some some scrim games, like one or two, um, like per day or maybe a bit later in the season, right? Like we would sh shake things up. And also actually, this is something I forgot to mention as well. The Red Canets team is everyone got playing time in scrims and uh, the, the people that were not playing are then kind of uh, a 
uh, a positional coach for that role. Like they're paying attention to that player. They're learning from that player. Like they need to like kind of feed off of each other and contest each other in that way in order to become better themselves, right? Because I think this would be another topic, but uh, but I think why academy systems just have not worked like in the past so far is because if you would do internal scrims like 10 men, uh, people would, or from what I've heard, like I don't have this personal experience with 10 men roster because I do not know. Um, but, uh, but from 10 men rosters, like internal training is that let's say the LSE team would on purpose somewhat sabotage scrim games because um, then they could kind of give like a confirmation bias of like, oh yeah, this practice is useless or there is like no chance for the academy player to prove themselves like to the guy in the main team and uh, for the for the guy in the main team to be uh, contested, right? Like, and this is like a cultural problem or is it cultural? I don't really know what name to give this, but like, it's just like a problem that occurs where these are kind of reality checks like where this is needed for you to become better like they don't have the understanding or they're not willing to have that player um contest them so they they can become better themselves right like we want to prevent this to protect our own jobs basically right um but going back to uh, uh what what I was talking about like within the rider so like he would get like scrim time right um same thing for shadow uh, that ended up playing in uh, Splice Mad Lions. I don't know if they already renamed to Mad Lions uh, or merged with Mad Lions, I should say. But he's now still playing in LPL, I believe. He was in NRP like last year, I think. Mm. Um, but I don't know where he's playing right now. But we also had Shadow. But like we had this weird situation going on with his um, his nationality because he was a Chinese Italian, but he didn't have like an Italian passport because he was underage, right? So. Uh, we couldn't really make a, a, a visa work for him or anything. So like we couldn't actually officially field him. We still ho held on to him in the team just to help him develop, but we could never actually make practical use of him. But, technically, right? But yeah, so we already had Finn prepared like in the back end because Cyrus is a very low resource top laner that is like very, a very great communicational leader. Uh, that keeps everyone on the same page and um, and I was always asking the right questions during the game in order to develop plans. Uh, and he was just like a, a like a weak side ki weak side ki uh, weak side king. There we go. Right. He was very good. And we also had the occasional uh, singed <laughs> singed trap card when it was Orn meta, where singed was uh, some players could play singed in order to counter that matchup. But yeah. Um. So Finn had to fill his shoes. Finn was a full rookie, had very little experience. I mean, they did play in EO Masters before that when NRP actually had a Scandinavian team, I believe. Um, but um, but yeah, like he really looked up to Zyrez. He was very nervous. It was the semifinals against Mad Lions as well, um, where the series went to 2-3, where third game was actually in a winning condition. Oh, sorry, fifth game was in a winning condition for us, but then... Uh, we messed up. Syncroft lost a lot of focus and energy. And uh, backstage, there were just like too many people because there was Daylord, there was a psychologist, there were two coaches, so me and Jandro. Um, there was like too much, too many things going on, right? Um, and like dynamic shifted as well, like with uh, so many people being there. Everyone wanted to kind of like influence the team, like out of goodwill. But in the end, what it did is like it put way too much load, like cognitively, on players. So we just didn't we, we just lost the series two three in the end. And this was the Mad Lions with Whirlip, Self Made, Nemesis, uh, Crown Shot, and Falco. So like a lot of big names that we see. So mm. sometimes we uh we we talk a bit jokingly what would happen if Cyrus did not like follow this fate, right? And if he were there, like because we were at that time the regular season champions and we were going toe to toe with Mad Lions with a substitute, right? So then it's like, oh, imagine what would have happened because that Mad Lions ended up winning uh, the Superliga uh, and EU Masters and all of those players went into LEC, mm. right? Like very successful careers in the end. I mean, for Nemesis, like, I mean, that's a, apparently a controversial topic, but yeah, even Crown Shot actually in that, that case, but BDS is doing well, but yeah, I cannot tell basically, mm. right? But we talk about that sometimes. So it's like, what would have happened, you know, like if that didn't happen? 